Okay, welcome back to our diagnosing series. And today what we're gonna talk about is the GM late model HEI distributor. Um, that's what I refer to it as. Uh, this distributor was used in the cars from 1987 to 1995 um, on the trucks. It was used in some earlier engines like 2.5s and stuff. Um, the marine industry started using it around 1989, 1990-ish, uh, somewhere around there. Uh, Crusader started using it uh, as a standalone system without EFI connections. Um, later years, uh, the marine industry used it through the early 2000s, and it's pretty much extinct since then. But like I say, car production, you know, outside of some four-cylinder and six-cylinder engines, you know, middle, early 80s, and then, like I say, 87 to 95, fuel-injected uh, Chevy truck engines, VIN K, like the 5.7s, that kind of stuff, 454s, 5.0s, that, this is what we're going to talk about. So this is a distributor out of another engine that we're working on, but I'm going to use this for clarity because this one's already in the engine. So what I want to talk about is a no-spark or no-injector pulse concern, okay? We're going to talk a little bit about the wires here on these connectors, what they do. We are not going to deal with the fuel injection part as far as the timings, as far as EST or DREF. We're going to use DREF to do some diag, but we're not going to... Uh, diagnose the infamous code 42 which is you know the bypass line and so forth so let's get into this so here are the players in the circuit okay so you've got a two I should plug this back in here so you've got uh, a two connectors in the back of the distributor okay you've got the two wire connector and the four wire connector the two wire connector goes right to the ignition coil okay the four wire connector is goes to the ECM okay if it's fuel injected now if this is a carbureted uh, engine without ECM input this will be blank but you're also going to need it to time it because you got to put it in base mode and we'll talk about base mode here in a second but anyway long story short um, the, the red wire here in this case is 12 volts the white is the tech okay and the other piggyback harness is for the ignition module so all this does is put power and this is a coil trigger so pink here is the same thing as my big red um, and my white is the same thing as my brown now some boat engines this is a big purple the cars it was always red if i remember right red and white um, white's usually tack but some engines it's purple so the first thing i want to do in a no spark situation is we're going to turn the key on here. Oh, and what I should do, I'm going to turn the key on. So you hear the fuel pump run. All right, is I want to talk about the tools we need, okay? And all we need is three tools to diagnose a no spark or no injector pulse concern, okay? They are this test light right here, okay? Uh, it's got to be an old school bulb test light, all right? This is a Lyle 28400. It can't be a fancy Snap-on or Mako or, or some digital LED light. That's not going to work. It's got to flow current, so it's got to be an old, cheap, uh, Harbor Freight, perfect, okay? The other thing you need is an adjustable gap spark tester or an ST125 if you're an old Snap-on type guy. Um, we're going to crack this. We're going to turn this thing to crack about 25,000 volts. It should crack that no problem, okay? And the last thing is a DVOM, okay? A DVOM such as this Fluke 78 it will work fine. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, 8878 or just any old Harbor Freight DVOM, as long as it's digital, that's good. It's got to have AC function, and it's got to have ohms to do what we want to do here. So I do this unconventionally. I don't, I don't do this what the service manual tells you to do. So we're just using theory how it works, and we're going to get this done quick. Okay, so let's say I walk up to this thing and it doesn't start. Okay, so let's say I check and I've got no spark. And to me, the only way to check for spark is an adjustable gap spark tester. Okay, so I got this turned out to 25,000 volts. All right. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check, see if we got power of the coil. Now, what I like to do, okay, is I like to check it right here. All right, because I'm going through my coil. So I'll take my handy dandy test light. My red wire should have power. And if my coil's got continuity, shows for the brown. So basically power on both sides here, see my light lights, 
if I want to use my meter, which I can, I should have battery voltage here. See 12.4 on this one and 12.4 on the other one. All right, that tells me I've got continuity through my coil. So that, that's a pretty good sign. Uh, the other thing we can do, or you should do, is we'll unplug the coil, just this part, and let's ohm these two wires right here. So we'll flip my meter to ohms. All right, and let's go across these two guys. And I should have, you know, six to eight ohms, something like that. And I've got seven ohms, okay? So my coil primary circuit has continuity, okay? So that's a good sign that the coil is probably okay, okay? Not a guarantee, but it's a probably. So the next thing you, I want to do is one of the things that's real, real handy if it's fuel injection, there's one thing you want to listen for. So like when you turn the key on, uh, on GMs, if, and again, this is a fuel injected engine only, this, this test. So you hear the fuel pump prime, all right? Then the next thing I want to do, if we're getting a good signal on DREF, and let, let's talk about these plugs here real quick. So this plug here for the computer, you've got four wires, okay? You got a black with a red, you got a brown with a black, okay on pin b a a is uh black with a red that is uh, low reference or ground okay that goes right back to the ecu uh terminal b is the br tan black that is the bypass um how the bypass works is when the computer sees 400 rpm it puts five volts on this line to let the computer the engine computer in this case a miffy 2 box okay or the chevy car computer or whatever uh, to control timing. The purple with a white is what they call DREF or distributor reference. This is the RPM signal to the engine computer. So this is a, if, you got, if you're a lab scope guy, which I am, but like I say, I'm not using a lab scope here because I realize 99% of you don't have one. When the engine's cranking or running, that's a 012 square wave, okay? The white is EST, electronic spark timing. This is a signal coming from the ECU to the module to tell the module what to do. It's also a 012 signal, all right? So basically 400 RPM is reached, computer applies five volts on the tan black, the DREF signal is obviously going into the engine as long as it's cranking and running, and then the computer will then send the signal on the white to tell the module where to control timing based on you know knock sensor input, based on coolant temperature, based on load. If it's got a uh, MAP sensor, which obviously does, or a mass airflow, any of that stuff, that's gonna, the computer is gonna change the algorithm based on inputs, TPS, coolant, air temp, the whole smash. Okay, so one of the things I like to do, all right, is if I, uh, when I crank this engine over, okay, I'm gonna crank this over and I should have spark because this is a known good system, okay? I'm gonna hook that up. Is if I've got a valid DREF signal, I'm gonna hear the fuel pump run after I crank it. So I'm gonna leave the key on and I'm just gonna crank this for a couple of seconds. I'm, I'm gonna have spark and then let's listen for the fuel pump after I get done cranking. Hear that fuel pump cut off? That tells me I've got a good DREF signal. If I hear that, there's no sense even going to the next piece which is the pickup hole. Because if I've got a good DREF signal coming there, I know my pickup is good, all right? Now, if I didn't hear that fuel pump run after the crank, we'll do it one more time. Boom, fuel pump just cut off. I know I've got a valid 012 signal here, all right? Well, let's say I didn't have that. Let's, let's do some hypotheticals here, okay? So let's say I had no spark, no injector pulse. The next thing I would do is I would disconnect this terminal, okay? And the only thing I'm really concerned about is the purple with a white tracer. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my handy dandy Harbor Freight test light, or Lyle, and I'm gonna connect it to 12 volts. Obviously this is convenient because I got a battery right here. And then I'm gonna take my test light and I'm just gonna touch and release the purple with a white tracer. Every time I do that, I am gonna, I should hear the fuel pump run in this case and the injectors are gonna click. So let's do this. Hear it? That tells me, when I, if I can do that, that tells me that my computer's awake, 
It can run the fuel pump and it can do the injectors. Now, if this is a car engine, Chevy used an oil pressure switch to run the fuel pump. I'm not gonna hear the fuel pump, okay? This is a marine or late model GM only. So you should always check a wiring diagram and make sure because GM for years only used the fuel pump relay to prime the fuel pump circuit. They did not use it to run the engine. Start so like an 80, 88 Chevy pickup, you could start the truck up, pull the fuel pump relay out, throw it in the drink, and it, the engine's still gonna run because it uses oil pressure. But the marine engines, always used it through this way and i think like 95 i think one of the last years they went through the fuel pump relay in the trucks but th th again this is from memory don't quote me but no matter what you should hear the injectors click whether it's a tbi engine or a port fuel engine you should hear them click so that's a good sign so we're done with this as far as a no spark concern as far as this circuit that's a good sign all right so let's say i didn't have that or excuse me let's say i had that and let's say i have no spark all right the next thing i want to do is I want to unplug the pickup coil. All right, so we're gonna take a screwdriver, we're gonna unplug this guy. All right, and I've got a green and I've got a white wire. Hopefully that comes out good. Green and white, all right? And the first thing I wanna do is we're gonna take our meter, all right? And we are going to check ohms, all right? Ohms on this device is usually anywhere between four and 800 ohms, something like that. So I like to back probe it from the back side, just like, oh, hopefully you can see it, all right. All right, and I've got 825 ohms, okay? So that's good, I can check it to ground. So I've got, I've got continuity through my pickup coil and I'm, I'm poking it to ground there, nothing. Okay, so that's good, all right? The next thing I wanna do to test this is I wanna test the integrity of this magnet. Now, one of the main problems with these engines, especially on the cars, is they would stall at low speed, okay? And the reason is this magnet would break up. It would get weak, and it can't create enough magnetism in here to trigger this pickup coil. Well. Ohm meter test isn't necessarily going to test that, but I want to test the integrity of the magnet and the coil of the wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to crank this engine over and we should have between 400 and 700 millivolts. Okay, so basically half a volt of AC current coming out of this pickup coil. Or I should say AC voltage. All right, so I've got my test still in here. I'm going to flip my meter. See, I'm, went, I'm at ohms. All right, 825. Let's flip it to AC. Okay, the squiggly line, and let's rotate this engine. Okay, we're gonna crank it over. Now this is gonna vary depending on how good your magnet strength is, how fast your engine turns over. The faster the engine turns over, the more reading, the, the higher the reading I'm gonna see. The slower it turns over, the lower I'm gonna see. So let's check here and let's see what we have cranking over. I've got between five and 600 millivolts. That's good. The pickup coil is good. The, uh, the, the, the magnet is good. I'm done there, okay? So I know that my pickup and everything is good. Uh, the last test I wanna do is I'm going to use my donor distributor because it's just gonna be easy to show you, okay? The last thing I wanna do here, we're gonna take our test light Okay, and we're gonna hook it to ground, all right? So I've got my test light hooked to ground, all right? And then I'm gonna test my test light here, see it works, all right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug this, and I'm gonna plug it into my donor distributor here. And again, I, I realize you're not gonna have a donor distributor. You can do this on the car. I'm just doing this because it's easier to do. And I've gotta make sure my distributor is grounded because my module is grounded when it mounts, okay? So I need to ground my module. So I will get my ground wire here. All right, just like that. And then I'm gonna turn my key on to the fuel pump prime. And then I'm going to, I've got my distributor plugged into the coil on the engine. So forget, 
like I say, I'm just using this here as an example. And all I want to show you is I'm going to touch this green wire with my test light to trigger the module. Okay. And I, like I said, I don't need the four wire connector for this. Uh, don't necessarily have to. Uh, but let's touch this with power here. See that spark? Every time I touch and release that, I should get a spark. Or not. There it goes. Yep. I gotta get a good connection. See? So that, that tells me my module's good. You know, and if I plug this into here, okay, so let's say this is my distributor on the car. I should hear the fuel pump run because this is a marine engine and the injectors click too. Hear it? See? Just like that. All right, so to review this, if I have 500 millivolts AC cranking, my magnet, my pickup coil is good. If I can trigger the green wire, you know, while it's connected to the man module, I should have spark from my spark tester. That tells me my module is good. Okay, uh, and if I and if I have this plugged in to the engine, um, you know, th through the four wire connector, if I have that plugged in, I should hear my at least my fuel injectors click. If it's a marine engine or a late model uh, truck engine, uh, I'm going to hear the fuel pump as well. Okay, um, that's basically a crash course um, on these systems. They were a pretty good system, but it, you see how easy. I mean, it took me longer to explain it. But a test light in that, I come over here, like I say, I can hit 12 volts, uh, you know, through this, and you hear the fuel pump and injectors click, um, or like I say, specifically injectors, and, and then and then go from there. Check my AC current, and done. So I don't need a fancy module tester. I don't have to rely on somebody at a parts store to test this on some goofy tester. You can test all this stuff right here, just like I did this quickly, um, using you know a, a test light and using a spark tester and a voltmeter. That's all you need to diagnose this very popular GM HEI system. So common problems are weak magnets, stalling at idle because it can't create enough AC. You're gonna catch that on your cranking test with this. Um, and once in a while we see a module fail, you know. So, um, and, and on the carbureted marine engines uh, that does not have this, you have to use a, an adapter harness to time this. And basically what it does is it jumps D ref into EST. So the back, you're gonna use the last three wires here. You're gonna use B, C, and D. So the, the, the pigtail, I wish I had one here to show you, but I don't, takes D ref and it jumps it to EST. So purple white is jumped to uh, white, and then you put power to the bypass. So basically the D ref signal that comes out of the module goes right back into EST and that will lock the timing uh, because these engines have a module mode and an ECM mode, and that's what that 5-volt uh, bypass wire is for. So, and the marine modules with carburetor, you got to use an, uh, a D1965A AC Delco because that'll have about 16 degrees advance. A car module, such as a standard LX340, it will only advance just a few degrees, like not even eight or so. So, because they're meant for the module to take over. You know, the module is meant to or excuse me, the engine computer is meant to do that. So I hope uh, you learned something with that. If you got any questions or whatever, let me know. Uh, but hopefully uh, if you have an old Chevy truck or you have a marine engine, uh, this will alleviate confusion on a no-start concern. Thanks for watching.